driving me home. Yep, 96 degrees. Oh, not 96 miles an hour. No, 96 degrees. Do not do 96 miles an hour. Because that would be breaking the law. 96 degrees is fine, but it's not. 96 inside the car, it's nice and cool. Can you see all these almonds growing? Yeah, they go forever. We've for been, miles? For miles and miles and miles. Oh, and pistachios. We're going through, uh, from North California, from the San Francisco sort of Bay Area, just below there, down to... Is that that uh, way or that yeah, way? That, that way. That way? Yeah, where we just come from, <laughs> <laughs> down to Los I'm Angeles. Going this way. Uh, and that's where we're heading, and we're, um, we're heading back after an incredible few days. We've been to, um, it's got a mixture of names, so we've been to the Monterey Car Week for the Pebble Beach Concours, um, but we spent a great day on the Laguna race circuit as well. So we did lots of things and we just wanted to catch up with you and fill you in uh, with what we've been doing. Going for a sandstorm. We are, yeah, it's a bit of a sandstorm, it's good. We saw a hurricane over there. Yeah, well, it's more of a tornado. Tornado, sorry. Little tornado. A hurricane would just be <laughs> a blast. <laughs> What's up it wasn't what? a mirage, was it? No, or a montage? Michelle, it wasn't a montage, no. that's a mirage. Yeah. Um, my wife's getting a bit dizzy. Um, it's, <laughs> the sun. it's the sun. It's the sun. Uh, so anyway, yeah, we've uh, just been to Monterey Car Week. It was uh, freezing there, by the way. It was cold, oh yeah, it was my chilly. God. Um, and uh, we've had a, a fantastic time. So it started off on uh, Thursday night when we went to a Haggerty party. Haggerty Insurance invited us to a, a party where we uh, um, had, a, had a blast just meeting people. Uh, really lovely place to lodge on Pebble Beach. Uh, which was uh, on the golf course and there was a, a, some beautiful cars around. People um, watching. Yeah, we did a lot of people watching and uh, we had a few cocktails with a few old chums of ours and friends and uh, we just had a, a great time. And then uh, we went out for dinner in the evening and it was lovely and um, we... Who are, did we go for dinner with? We went with Nicholas and Heather yes. Hunsinger, yeah. who uh, the Hunsinger people, you know, this company here that make um, all this apparel and uh, they, uh, Nicholas is a fine artist, uh, a huge Porsche enthusiast. Amazing and, uh, people. Really amazing people. So we went out for dinner with them. And then on Saturday, um, no, that was Thursday, Friday, uh, we sort of did a bit of running around. We went to the Works Reunion, which is a Porsche show. Uh, and we went and see a load of Porsches at on that. On a golf course. On a golf course, really nice as well. Yeah, it was amazing. Beautiful, really nicely laid out, and we had a, a fantastic time there. Met and some I'm, lovely people. Yeah, I met tons and tons of fans of the show, uh, which is really nice, and I, I spent hours there meeting people, which was lovely. Wasn't official, I just popped in, but I got spotted, and, um, and that was it. I just spent the day talking to people about cars. Uh, it was really nice. And then on, uh, we went out for dinner Friday night, again with Nicholas and Heather, and then on Saturday, we uh, shouted at dinner. You we did shout at dinner. Ourselves. Yeah, it was really weird. We went to this um, uh, well-known here. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, Italian restaurant in downtown Monterey. It's really funny this. And uh, we walked in at like ten. To have a conversation. Have a conversation at like ten to ten. We walked in and we sat down and. Over comes the bread to the table, and we just ordered a, an hors d'oeuvre uh, for the table. And then all of a sudden, a full 80s disco just appeared in the corner of the restaurant, and people stood up and started dancing around. And we're, <laughs> we're trying to have a conversation. Screaming. And uh, this disco, you got you know people jigging between your table as you're trying to put your soup down. And it throat. was the 80s, wasn't it? Was it was the 80s, it was a blast. It was like being at home. It was really funny. Um, so we had a nice evening there, uh, and then on Saturday we had a, we had a great day. Saturday we got up and went to uh, Laguna Race Circuit, uh, where we um, looked at all the Formula One racing cars, looked at a few uh, few of the races. But we spent the majority of the day uh, on the Hunziger um, stand there, where they had a huge, great big stand, um, and I was there to do an autograph signing session uh, because we have a, a range of wheeler dealer merchandise there, and it was fantastic. It was so nice. Um, I was there for hours talking to people, having such a, an amazing time until I was whisked away uh, to go and do a live stage performance with uh, Wayne Carini, Ray Evanham, Bob he Scanlon. Was amazing, he's right. Ra yeah, he's great. Uh, Ray Evanham, um, uh, Jay, Jay, 
the, the guy that runs Pixar and all the, the cars move is he's the guy, he's a real car guy as well. Uh, make sure that the cars are right and the cars move is. And my boss of the network, uh, Bob, and uh, um, Wayne Kareen is uh, producer, her name is Hannah. So we went and met her, uh, we met them and we appeared on stage in front of an audience and we spoke about the success of, of car TV shows. Uh, so that was really, really nice. We had a, a lovely afternoon there. Again, uh, lots of questions from the audience and uh, a lot of fun. It was really good fun. And uh, you enjoyed it? Yeah, it was amazing. Yep. It was good, Very wasn't it? good, yeah. Really interesting. And then we went um, from there, uh, we went and had a drink, didn't we? Yeah. Found a cocktail bar. Yeah, we bonded. We bonded. Not yeah. together. No, not together. But <laughs> we've already bonded. Uh, in the company we were with. Yeah, we did. We bonded with oh, the company. Oh, we group. saw uh, Barrett Jackson, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we saw Craig Jackson yeah, and, and, and Carolyn. Wife. And we saw, uh, funny enough, Magnus Walker, another Porsche enthusiast. Yeah. And uh, we saw some really lovely people. We did. We had a, a great time. More people watching. Yeah, lots of people watching. Watching the... Um, Watching the one percent walk around this very five-star hotel lobby is kind of interesting. They all live in a different world. They do. The one percent are an amazing bunch of people, aren't yeah, they? Yeah. Um, I think once you become part of one percent, you put branded sort of wear on you that's really loud. Branded wear. Um, you have some kind of operation that pulls your face back somewhere else and uh, you go and get yourself a really amazing car and then cover it in chrome and put some flashlights on it. Yeah. That's what the 1% do. Look at that, old fire, yeah, look it's look a that. Japanese fire engine. And look at that. Uh, yeah, and there's a hot rod, I can't show you, it's a hot rod towing, a hot rod trailer. Uh, with Sorry, I had to move the camera. I had to move the camera because in the windscreen of the car it's getting too hot. Uh, so I've had to move it to one side so I can get a blast of air-conditioned air blowing up uh, behind it to keep it cool, otherwise it keeps shutting down. Um, so anyway, uh, I just wanted to tell you, that was the 1%, but now I want to tell you what's happening in the real, in, world. In the real world, right? In the market well, in our no, world. In our world. Well, no, let's tell them what's happening with the 1%. Uh, because the one. No, no, the phone cut off. Oh. I was talking, nobody was listening. Sit down then. Sit down, you're gonna like this. So um, there was a few tea, there was a few auctions going on over the weekend. Uh, and I've been saying about the market and the way the market's shifting, uh, the classic car world, it has been changing recently. Um, and we've noticed the last couple of years the high-end cars, the super Uber one percent cars, uh, they've tailed off ever so slightly. Mid-range Americana has dropped off, unfortunately, so you know, there's a the dying breed of customers now for 57 Chevy Bel Airs and T-Birds. They're, they're sort of dying off. Excuse me. <laughs> ah, don't know where that come from. It's because I probably said Americana. I'm allergic to it. Maybe. It's not all the pollen, is it? No, it could end? be. It could be. Or the cows. There's cows here. Look at the cows over in that oh, field. Yeah. And right. there's grapes, grapes. And there's pistachios and almonds. Yeah, it's almost like a oh, bread. It's like a, it's like a breast bu bread basket here. And you've grapes. got you've got beef, you've got beef burgers, no, gr and wine. I've got no, grape, grapes, grapes and, and steak. And nuts. All in one place. Me. Anyway, um, I digress. And I was, sweet corn, it looks like. And sweet corn, yes. I digress. I was telling you about the prices of cars. Uh, Mid-range cars. Uh, now the the future of classic cars is um, really not with those old sort of, you know, the old Americana from the 50s yeah, or... We never saw any of them. No, not, never really saw any of them. No, the future of prices is the cars that I'm interested in. It's the, uh, the 80s, 90s and 2000 classics. You know, it's, it's that JDM market, Japanese domestic market. It's cars from that era. And that's played out this weekend at the auctions. And it's been really, really interesting. Now, I don't want to lay claim to being a guy that uh, you know knows everything, because I certainly don't, I'm learning every day. But I have been saying for a lot of time what is happening, uh, and I can see it in the future. One of the things I've been saying is about originality. Originality, which is kind of the premise of me, I like to put cars and make them as original as possible. Nods to the future can be good in a car, making them fit for the future is good, but making them original is, real, is cars. A, it, real cars, is making them, uh, is, is getting and stripping off the crap and putting them back to how they should be, and that's part of my, uh, my ethos. Right, now, 
originality has really been shining through this weekend at Monterey at Car Week, you know, with some of the cars that have been going across the auction block. Uh, first of which was on Friday. So screw yourself into your chairs, because this is kind of astonishing. But, uh, I, I hope I got the figures right, because I couldn't find it again, but it was a, ready? And you all know this car, the 2002 BMW M5. Now that car, BMW M5 from 2002. Uh, not really a car that's in the same realms of a as a Jaguar E-Type or a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or an Aston Martin. This car had very low miles on it, just 500 miles. So therefore, the value in that car is just... That's rare. That's rare. That is rare, yeah. but you have to think about it like I do. The value in that car is just now staring at it because you can't drive it. Every time you drive that car, you've got to put miles on it, you can devalue it, aren't you? You know, the, 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 the okay. reason the car is worth what it's worth is because it's only got 500 Listen, miles. it's better putting the money in the car than in the bank. Well, not, well, I'm not too sure in this case, that's what I'm saying. If you've got some disposable income and you want to stare at a car, which I hate, I think cars should be used, that's what they're there for. No, you put a blanket over it, you put it in. No, but I'm, I'm not convinced that's, a, uh, this is where we differ. See, I'm not convinced that's right. Because you've got to listen, this car's only done 500 miles. I know. Right, so if the car's done 1,000 miles, right, the point of the value of the car is done 500 miles. I know that. So if it's done 1,000 miles, it's yeah. going to be worth less, isn't yes, it? Yes, right. Yeah, so exactly. somebody has gone and bought a BMW M5. To invest, just to keep it as it is and put it away. And put it away. Like right, so they can't the ever bank. use it. No. Right, so they've gone and bought because a basically... they've got more money than Sainsbury's. Exactly what I'm saying, right? So they've just gone and bought a paperweight, haven't they? Yes. Right, they've gone and bought an ornament. Which is going to go up in value. How is it going to go up in value? How do you know? Because when he brings it out in X amount of years, there's, it's going to be rarer because it's only done but 500 it's a, the, miles. These, these lovely people here, right here on listening to me and you bicker about it... I'm not bickering. They don't even know what it's sold for. But when I tell them, <laughs> I think they're going to drop their beers. A hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars. So hey? who's better off, the person who sold it or the person who's invested in it? It don't make any sense to me because I, I was offered once a BMW Z1 with 25 miles on the clock, right? Well, if I'd known that, I would have bought it. Well, you did know that. I told you about well, it. I told you to buy things. You were you, watching you, Love you Island or something. You weren't. You Love was. Island. You was watching some. Tosh on the TV, and Tosh I said, "There's on a the TV. yeah, there's a BMW Z1. Hit the brakes, hit the brakes, don't die." Oh we my was God. right. So there's a BMW Z1, 25 miles, and I said to you at the time, and I'd still I still state my case. To Love Island down there. What he said. I state no the policy fan. Apologize. Right? No, I'm not he got addicted to it. He sat down one night and he couldn't stop watching it. So I don't know where he's coming from. Absolutely not. Oh no. No. Right, anyway, so um, I got offered a BMW Z1 with 25 miles on the clock. And as I said, I phoned BMW because I said, this is one for you and it should be going into your headquarters, back into your collection. And even they agreed with me. Um, the value in that car is, is value less because you can never drive it. You yeah. can't do anything. You can't take it to shows and show it off. The moment you put another mine on it, it starts devaluing. So it become a trailer okay, queen and get... Who's bought the car, though? Is he in the 1% or out No, or he's out of 1% because it was 176 grand. But yeah, now, exactly. let me just... Well, let me just carry on, right? Let me just so carry us, on. us out of that world need to do that, to put it there, to get the 1% to buy it, to make the money. What the hell does it? You're an enigma woman. No, what does I know that mean? What I'm talking about. You know what you're talking about, but none of us do. They do. They don't. They don't. Don't worry. They don't. Seriously. <laughs> it's, it's a montage. It's a mirage. <laughs> it's, it's a montage. Um, anyway, so that, anyway, that, that, that's good for us, the normal people. It is we good. Stick them in, and the one percent make us some money. I so don't know. Bring it on. I don't know anyone. I don't know people who got 176 grand, Michelle, to go yeah, dump into a BMW. We're not talking about the one percent. One percent bought the Ferrari. Yeah, they bought they the Ferrari. Bought, they bought that car as well. They didn't buy that car. Well, well a normal, normal people would not, spend that on a car. You are so not listening to a word I'm saying, are you? You're just, you're just diddling along. I know what own, I'm talking about. Good. Right. So you do. You stay over there on that side of the car and know what you're talking about. Oh, there's another. Hurricane. <laughs> there is as well. That's a right? robot. Jesus. Is that a robot? That was a robotic. Wow. That was a robotic what was that doing? grass cutter. 
pistachios. Oh, it was going around on its own. There was nobody on it. Which is amazing. Bring them over here. Anyway, now let's go back to cars. Let's go back to cars because I've been saying about originality, originality. Can I just say these nuts are growing here? (laughs) station they cost an arm and a leg <laughs> unbelievable and they're here growing right next to the petrol station somebody has to walk into this field at 100 fahrenheit and pick them off the they're tree cheaper crack they're, the nuts put them into a bag in package them jones. make sure they've got no bugs that's got to be paid for hasn't they're it they're cheaper in trader joe's and they're raw so Trader Joe's, if you want to send us some free nuts, please. Yes, right, Aldi's. <laughs> right, okay. So uh, let's go back to cars. So I'm now. I, I told you about the BMW that went for on Friday. So that was a bit of a, you know, a shock to me because uh, it's just a 2002 M5. And don't get me wrong, Mr. Smith and Mr. Jones doesn't mean to say that if you've got a 2002 BMW M5, your car automatically. It's going to be worth 100 grand. It doesn't. It doesn't mean that. This car only had 500 miles. So it was very specific and there was the right person in so the room at the, the right mileage. time. That one. Right. So then it started to carry on this. Now, it carried on into into Saturday. So uh, there was a, a 19,000 miles. So 19,000 miles isn't incredibly low mileage, is it? 19,000 miles. 1978 Mercedes 450 SEL. That's the uh, the 6.9 saloon, so just a Bogo standard 450 SEL. I remembered I took you for a date when we first met in a 450 SEL. It was about 1984, but this would be a 1978. So nice car, usable car, probably comes mint. from. Oh, was it mint? Oh, it was a, a, amazing condition. Yeah, mint. 19,000 miles. Original. Oh, they're getting lower. Right, so this was a, a, a lovely car, okay? And it sold at auction for $156,000. That's about £130,000. Why didn't I keep the ones that we had? Well, if we kept every car we bought. It's ridiculous, right. Mountain. So originality is paying. Uh, obviously, we're seeing a shift in that. Now, I've been saying for years, and I don't want to give the game away here because, you know, I'm one of the guys chasing these cars but you know this is my job my job is to inform and educate and hopefully you you listen to me uh, i've been saying for years um what well, the last couple of years a car that's on the ascent and going to be a, it's going to be they're going to triple in price over the next few years a porsche 928 now this is the unloved porsche it's got that five liter v8 porsche engine uh, I've been saying you can buy one of these for sub 20 grand still today. What was the mileage? Uh, well, remember, we was at Barrett Jackson. One went through with 25,000 miles off just $22,000, the red one. And I said, I was busy at the time, but I said, look at the car. I should buy it. And I was going to buy that car. I'm convinced that in two years' time, that's a, a 50,000 pound car. I'm convinced of it. Um, but I didn't buy it. I'm an idiot, right? Uh, but anyway, this weekend... A 4,200 miles, so a, a low mileage again, 1995, so a real late generation car. So it's a modern classic uh, of an unloved Porsche. It's a 928 GTS, and it was an auto, so it wasn't even a, a stick. It was an auto. It went for an RM Sotheby's, and it sold for a very cool $140,000, about £110,000. Okay, so there you go again, right? I'm saying, I'm telling you two years ago, go buy one and find a low mileage one. I should Stay in the left one. two lanes. Excuse me. I should have bought that one uh, that I, I see at Barrett Jackson and I didn't. Uh, also, another little wobble that went through uh, an auction up here t- this weekend with all these supercars around. Uh, stay in the left hand lane, yeah. With all the supercars and all these hyper and uber cars everywhere. Um, there was a 1977 Honda Civic, CVCC. Remember, uh, both me and Ed China did one on Wheeler Dealers. Uh, the little yellow one that went back to uh, went back to Honda. They put it in their headquarters. Uh, almost the identical car to that. And I sold that one to Honda. Uh, this was, again, just a an original car. So originality, remember what I'm telling you? An unrestored car. Restored cars aren't making as much as unrestored cars. Uh, went through the auction at Meekham and made $22,000. Unbelievable. So, yeah, but how do you know these people haven't bought these cars and parked them up for years and then they know the right time to bring them out to get the 
the, the high But that's what they're gambling on, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. People. Because you can't do that in the bank. Because yeah. each of the cars that I mentioned have got very low mileage and as if you listen to my argument is if you put mileage on it, you're just devaluing it from I the know. moment of the, the, the only the only thing you can do with them is stare at them. So you understand that. Right, good. So um that, that, that means that there's been that means there's been another change. Uh, there's been another change in the market. So the high-end stuff is now starting to bounce back, you know, with the, the Duesenberg and that Ferrari being sold for record prices. Um, and the middle-range cars, the cars that, you know, cars of my generation when I was young. Um, mid, yeah, most straight on middle-range cars. Um, they are, yeah, pull off. Uh, they are now um, on the ascent, you know, hugely. It's, particularly if they've got very low mileage. Uh, so really exciting times, really exciting. So we've had a, a fabulous few days. Today was the final day of the Meekham Car Week. It's the Pebble Beach Concord de Elegance. It's a beautiful car show on the lawn. We were invited to several parties there, or several hospitalities. Uh, but unfortunately, me and Michelle have had to get in the car now and drive back. Uh, it's about a six hour drive back, so we couldn't go because uh, I got a Filming in I got a beat. I've been called in to do some filming in the morning, and I'm flying back to the UK with Michelle in the afternoon. So we just can't find the time. But I'll tell you what I will be doing. I'll be sitting back, relaxing, and reading my new bookazine, My Brewers Used Car Heroes, available on uh, bookshelves or uh, magazine shelves in uh, across the UK. W H Smith, Sainsbury's, those kinds of places. Uh, you can get it online, you can get it on eBay, you can find it, and um, we've got a link to it on my bio. Uh, and it's a whole book of my, you know, knowledge, if you like, poured out on paper. I've been working on it for the past uh, few months, and uh, it's a good read. Lots of people have read it, and I thank you for your very kind reviews. Uh, so I'll be reading that again on the uh, aeroplane tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we're back to the UK. We're doing some filming in the UK next week, which I'm excited about, very excited. And uh, we've got lots of other things happening in the UK. And then uh, we're only bouncing back for a week and then we're here again. Uh, so that's been the crazy few days. Uh, that was a little bit of what's happening in the car market. And that's what we're gonna be doing next. But you've loved it, haven't you, the last few days? Oh yeah, it's been amazing. Spending time with amazing people. And? Uh, work colleagues. And, and Amazing people, amazing people, and 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 you. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. And we've really hung out, me and Michelle. We've had a great time, haven't we? Yeah, we've been wheeling dealer. We've been proper wheeling dealer. Yeah. We've really hung out. Selling t-shirts, trainers. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. All right, so that's Networking, it. Networking. That's it. Driving it, people mad. We have been driving people mad, but on a good way. Uh, so that's this team and this team. Are gonna say I in the word. She needs to eat. So this team, in the Refuel. words of the wheeler Refuel. dealers, want to say, "Tala." Ta